seven sports. Hi, Jeff. Um, Ohio State was 72nd in the country last year in total defense. I know you don't like the comparison from last year or this year, but uh, this year Ohio State number one in the country in total defense, number one in scoring defense. Just how much pride do you guys take in that? Do you care about those stats and just how much pride do you take in that? No, I think you take a lot of pride in it. You take pride in how hard these players have worked, how hard they've prepared, and what they've done on the field thus far. I, all, I think everybody knows we have we have two tough opponents left right now, and we'll see how that falls after those two. But yeah, for right now, these guys, the staff's done a really good job. They have, and the players, I, I've said it many times, I can't say enough about them and, and what they've done. I mean, you got to give a lot of credit to the players. I know you guys studied the metrics um, pretty closely. Other than keeping points off the scoreboard for a defensive coordinator, what's the most important stat or the most important, like maybe a few different stats that you really look at that are important? Well, I said this before, right? Big plays. I think if we make a team drive the length of the field and earn every single yard, um, I think you always have a chance to keep it out of the end zone. So to me, it's big plays and tackling. If you eliminate the explosives and you tackle, I think you have a pretty good chance to win at any level. Front row middle, Joey from the dispatch. You guys are getting Chase Young back this week. How excited are you? Very excited. <laughs> Very excited. I mean, I think everybody should be excited. I think he's one of the best players in all of college football. Um, you know, I, I think our team's excited. I know the coaches are excited. I'm sure the fans are excited. Um, excited for him. You know, I, I know it was hard for him not being in the last two games. I'm excited for him to get out and get back at it. Um, and I think our team is excited too. How much were you guys able to use him in practice the last couple weeks? Because you're being planned, and obviously he's probably not a part of that game plan because he's not playing the game. So what was his kind of like practice plan? Like? He took reps last week. Um, we didn't work him in as much because we had to get the other guys ready. But, but he took reps, made sure that he kept in shape and, you know, kept fresh. So he'll be ready to roll. No. Right next door, Bill from the dispatch. Yeah, you've got uh, obviously some stars like Chase, and you've got some senior stars, George Fuller and Rose Harrison. You've also got some guys who are maybe a little bit more under the radar, Landers and Cornell and, and guys like that. How important are those guys again, those senior guys for this defense? Yeah, the, the seniors are everything. I mean, they're the ones that establish the leadership. Um, they're the ones that go out and show everybody how hard we have to practice, how hard we have to study. Uh, those are the guys that when things get hard, people kind of rally behind. Um, those guys are the most important guys on the team. That's senior leadership from those guys you just mentioned and more. And even, even guys that are seniors that aren't playing as much, those are the guys you rely on, you know, to teach the younger players how to do it the right way, you know, the culture here. So those guys are really important. And in terms of Penn State, uh, what concerns you the most about what they do? Well, I think Penn State's really well coached. I think Ricky Ronnie does a great job. I think he's a good coach. They're very sound. I think he has a good scheme. He sees things very well. And then I think they have a lot of good players. They're strong up front. Uh, I think their quarterback's a good player. He's smart. He's physical. He's tough. He can run the ball. He can keep plays alive with his feet. He can throw the ball down the field. He's got a strong arm. And then obviously look at their wideouts. Uh, this, this is probably the best group that we've played this year. Uh, number one is dynamic. He's fast. He's quick. He can change direction, uh, but then the other guys are good too. They have a lot of speed, and then it might be the best tight end we've seen all year. So I think this is a very well coached football team with dynamic players, and they have a handful of backs that they play that do a good job as well. Front row right, Austin from Letterman Row. Sure. <coughs> We're supposed to have short memories, right? We asked Sean Wade, you know, he, he's still thinking about the Hamler touchdown he gave up last year, he's still talking about it. Is that a healthy thing for him to have internalized, or? What do, you, what do you make of that? Is he talking time? about that recently? He talked about it on Saturday night after the game. I'll make sure he doesn't remember it. He, uh, <laughs> he's got to forget about that. I mean, it's over. It happened so long ago. You know, playing corner, it's about the next play. Whether you were good or bad on the last one, he can't think like that. And I'll make sure he doesn't think like that. I think Sean's a new player. I think he's a better player. And I think he'll be ready this time. When you, sometimes those happen, right? Yeah. One-on-one. -on -one. How, is he, how is he more equipped to handle something like that than he was maybe? But I, know one, I know you weren't there. Yeah, he's more, one, I think he's more experienced. He's played more football, right? So when those scars happen, hopefully you learn from them. We all have them. I mean, Terrell Reeves got beat for touchdowns, and the next guy's going to get beat for touchdowns. I made bad calls, and I've done things I shouldn't have done. The important part is you learn from them, and I'm sure he's learned from it. And, you know, I haven't seen the play, and I really don't care to see the play, but where was his help? Where was the pass rush? So was it totally his fault, right? So you can never just blame one guy or one person. Hopefully you learn from it, and hopefully he's ready to go. And I know that he will be, but we'll make sure he doesn't think about it or remember it. 
He'll be ready to play. Third row right, Rob, from the dispatch. Offensively, um, quarterback isn't necessarily supposed to have a favorite receiver. He's supposed to take what's there based on uh, what the look is. But we know they do have some favorite receivers. Defensively, how do you handle that? Do you tell your guys he likes to throw to this guy, uh, even if that guy isn't necessarily the most talented, if that makes sense? Um, how do you scheme that? What do you say to your guys when you know that the QB, this is his guy? Well, I think you bring awareness, obviously, to where that guy is on the field. And then what formation is it? Where is he aligned in that formation? Is he to the field or is he to the boundary? And then why is he there? You know, are there certain splits that give things away? Are there certain formations that give things away? So you try to draw the attention to all that, not just who the player is. What down a distance do they like to throw him the ball? Where on the field do they like to throw him the ball? So there's more to it than just one player. And that's why you have to study this game. It's more than just go line up and play. But it's not like we're going to change everything we do for one player. Uh, but we're very aware of who he is, where he is, as well as the other receivers on the team. Is it fair to say that quarterbacks do have favorite guys? You got to ask Coach Day. I, if certain guys were my receivers, I'd have favorites. So, you got to ask Coach Day that. I'm a defensive guy. I have guys that I don't like that play receiver. So. <laughs> Third row left, Edward. Jeff, with Chase coming back, and you said there's no rust. What differences can you do with this defense with him against an offense like Penn State? as opposed to if he wasn't able to play? It's not so much what we can do differently. I mean, we can line him up here, line him up there. You guys all saw when we stood him up and moved him around. It's just I think he changes what they have to do. They have to account for him. You know, they might have to slide to him. They might have to keep a tight end on him. They might not have to keep a back end on him. They're going to have to find ways so he's not one-on-one. -on -one. They might have to get rid of the ball quicker. They might not be able to sit in the pocket and throw those deep developing routes that give you problems. So I think it's more so what are they going to do than what do we have to do. But certainly, we have to do a good job in the scheme of putting him in the best position to succeed. And what's his demeanor been like the last couple of weeks? Or the fact that he wasn't going through all the, the game reps and everything like that? Right? He's, been, he's been great. Um, he's came to work every day. Uh, he's met. I saw him watching film late last night. You know, he's practiced. He, he just he hasn't changed who he is. I know it was a tough time, and I, I think it will make him stronger in the end. Third row uh, middle. Dan from uh, 11 Warriors. Jeff. You guys have done a really good job of eliminating big plays this year. This is a Penn State offense that's had a lot of big plays. What are the things that you have to reinforce for your team this week to make sure that's not something that recurs this week? Yeah, it's uh, play the scheme. Um, rely on your fundamentals and your technique and do your job. And I know that sounds cliche, but that's the truth. Don't do anything different. Do what you've been coached to do. Do what you've been doing. Play the right leverage. Get off blocks. Tackle. Um, run to the football. And I, I'm not hiding anything from you. That's the truth. What's got us to this point is we're fundamentally sound. Our guys play really hard, and they're playing with really good technique and fundamentals. Um, so don't don't try to create anything. Don't don't change who you are because of who they are. And you guys made the decision to put uh, Kate Stover at defensive end this past week. Just wondering what went into that decision, and do you, is that kind of something you're just experimenting with, or do you kind of see that as his future at all? Yeah, we wanted to experiment with him. We've been doing it for a little bit in practice. He's been doing that a little bit on the scout team. Um, so we kind of just are trying to figure out exactly what he can do, uh, where he's best suited. So I, I think we'll continue to work through that and see what the best spot is for him. But he's very talented. He's got a lot of versatility. He's strong. He can run. Uh, so we're trying to find the best place for him right now. Second row middle. Bruce? Uh, I assume when you got here, you did a self-scout with the personnel you could coach him. Sure. Yes. What did you see? And um, did you design your defense based upon that? Or did you design your defense based upon what Ryan wanted? Well, we, we saw really good players. I saw really talented players um, at all three levels. And then I think we what we tried to do is we tried to take that skill set and that talent and put them in the best position. So I think it was a combination of stuff Coach Madison's done, stuff that I've done, stuff that Coach Johnson has done. Uh, we kind of pieced it all together to find out, you know, what does this group do really well, and how can we maximize that ability? And that's how, that's kind of how we put the scheme together. So you've given up essentially a third as many points, and about I mean, your yardage is a decrease of 80 percent. People ask you to explain how, because it's the same guy. It's not like you have impact freshmen. Well, again, I, I I watched the personnel last year, but I don't I don't want to draw any comparisons to that. So, how have we done it this year? I think one, we've got the guys to buy in. 
I think our staff has done a really, really good job teaching the scheme, but more importantly than anything else there is in football, guys, is fundamentals and technique. And I say that because I think that's lost today in football. And I've said this before, people get, I'm going to draw this blitz up and this coverage up, and I'm going to do this, this, and this. And we can all do that. But at the end of the day, what can you really execute? And if you have to spend all your time doing all of that, then how do you teach getting off of blocks? How do you teach leverage? How do you teach the proper steps? How do you teach tackling? How do you teach all the little things that are so much more important than scheme? So that's what we've done. And people might look at us on tape and say, oh, they, don't, they don't do too much. But we do. But I believe that we play with great fundamentals. And I would say right now we're one of the best tackling teams in football. And that was more important to us than any, wow, that's a great blitz, or wow, that coverage is so exotic. That's, to us, that, that was not the important thing. So I think we put our priorities in the right place with really good talent that was recruited here. And the players have bought it and worked. And I think that is why we are where we are right now. So if you had to give it a, a percentage accounting for the improvement or for your performance this year, what percentage would you say is scheme change? What percentage is buy-in? What percentage is technique and all those other instructions? I think it's, it's hard to put a percentage on that. I'd put the biggest percentage on the players buying in and then on them working the fundamentals and the technique. And the coach is doing a great job of, of getting them ready to do that. Um, but I'd give most of the credit to the players. And again, you also had a year more experience. You have a lot of guys that got a lot of playing time last year that this is year two for them. So, you know, if you do want to make comparisons or look back, a lot of these guys played last year, learned from it, got their scars, got better, and now they are playing again, which hopefully the more games you play and the more tough times you have, the better you will get. So I give the credit to the players on the team. Most improvement in sports is related somewhat to confidence. How oh, much no doubt. How much of the buy-in first had to be you getting them to believe they were better than the performance a year ago? That's huge. I mean, that's everything. And you see it day by day. If a guy plays well the way he comes out and practices the next day, practices better. In life, anything is confidence. I mean, you make a great point. So when I say that, the guys bought in. They did. They bought into what we were teaching and what they had to do. But I also think they developed a confidence in themselves. And I think if you watch us, or at least I hope if you guys watch us, you see a confident group because you have to play this game confident. Whether you're a DB turning and looking for the ball or you're a defensive end lining up against the tackle, that's everything, which is why I give the credit to the players. But you had to teach them to be confident. You had to get them confident. Well, I guess, I guess, I, I guess we figured that part out too. I still give the credit to the players. Uh, got, got time for a couple more. Front row right, Tim Letterman Rowe. Yeah, uh, Jeff, talk about not giving a big place. How much of a reality check was it for your defense? to give up that gash play off left tackle Saturday after the punt, <coughs> and, you know, you know what I mean, do you, in any season, do you need a reinforcement moment where you, if you don't take care of business, things can happen? Yeah, I think that's huge, and if you look back to that play, there were three or four players on the team at all different levels that should have stopped that play, and it's just a reminder, if you don't do your job every single play, and you're not precise on every single play, that that can happen, <coughs> and we have to eliminate that. That cannot happen, and hopefully won't happen. And uh, the other thing, with Chase coming back, is, do you think he's the kind of player that has to be, I don't know, toned down a little bit? Because I'm sure he's missed two games. Uh, he's excited about being back. Do you understand my – Yeah, no. You know, I, talk about playing this game and not just I – mean, how, how will you all handle that, I guess, going into the game, but making sure he's not over That's a good question, and I'm sure Coach Johnson will talk to him a lot about that. Mm -hmm. I just think you got to remind him to go out and do your job and remember – how you got here. And I think he will be excited, and I hope he is excited, and I hope he is a little ramped up on that first pass rush, and I hope he gets off the ball just a little bit faster than he usually does, because that would be really fast. <laughs> uh, but I think Coach Johnson will do a great job with him, and hopefully the first time he gets off the ball, it looks just like it. Uh, second row left, Ari from The Athletic. Jeff, it's senior day, right? And there's going to be a lot of talk about what some of the seniors, like Damon and you know, guys in, in your room, have thought of this program, but do you like have like an extra hour of time with Jeff this week too to kind of say goodbye? And <laughs> how does Jeff lead it? I would be shocked if he didn't. <laughs> no, I, this week, guys, every minute that we've had so far is going to prepare for Penn State. So hopefully, I'm spending an extra hour with all of them going over the film because this is a really good football team. Um, this is the best football team that we've played thus far. So everything is about this game. They will be in that working on that. I was just messing around a little bit, but I was just wondering if you could take me through just your progression with him. With um, who? With, with 
Jeff and just from the beginning what you've seen in terms of his development as a, a lockdown corner, his physical development maybe. Yeah. I know it's been kind of a short time in, in, the, cup, in the scope of an entire career, but how have you seen him? I think the best thing I could say about Jeff, and this is the truth, is he gets better every single week. He does stuff at practice every single day that he looks better at. He just absorbs everything, and that's fundamentals, technique, that's scheme, that's reading routes, it's understanding zone concepts, it's understanding leverage and man, it's understanding stacks and bunches. He's always in my office. He's always texting me questions. He's, the mental aspect of his game has grown so much. The physical aspect has grown so much. I don't even think that, I, I think who we see now, who we see two games from now will be a totally different and that's the fun thing about Jeff right now. The way he practices and the way he prepares, he's so much fun to coach. And again, that's a credit to him. And he is definitely a more confident player. And final questions, front row left, Doug. Jeff, you talked about um, what a team will have to do to prepare for Chase, right? Did you see anything in the last two games that you noticed both teams weren't maybe doing some things that they would have had to do? Like, what Did you see a difference on film that, oh, I can tell Chase is not there? Well, yeah, I think you saw some deeper developing routes. I think you saw the back getting out a little bit more, the tight end getting out a little bit more. But if you look, the first team before Rutgers that tried that, we had seven sacks. So guys stepped up, and they probably should have kept the tight end in the back end. Um, so you saw a little bit of, okay, maybe we don't have to do this, but then you saw what's coming. Because our young D-line, they're coming. And then hopefully next year at this point, one of those guys is being talked about the same way that Chase is being talked about. So you got to give a lot of credit to those young guys because they stepped up in practice, which was awesome. I mean, if you guys could have seen them practice when he was gone, I mean, it was impressive. And they all stepped up. And that's a credit to Coach Johnson and a credit to those young guys because they did a really good job when he was gone. I mean, what do we have? Eight, nine sacks in two games? That's pretty impressive. And you talked uh, about that this will be the best group of receivers that you guys have faced. With the talent you guys have at corner, just, you know, they've played very well. You haven't been necessarily super tested in the passing game, you know, every week just with the opponent. Just what's it been like with that group, with that room that you know they're good, they know they're good, they're maybe not being pushed to the limit every week. Here comes a big game. What's it been like coaching them this year in that situation? Well, you coach them hard. You coach them on every step. You coach them on every ball that's caught on them in practice. Because if you ask those guys, it's whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's a live rep, whether we're just jogging around, it's not okay to get a ball caught on you. And that's the mentality that they have to have. Because if they start becoming okay with the ball getting caught on them in walkthrough, then eventually it will be okay to get it caught on them in a real game. So you just gotta stay on them and coach them hard. And if their hands aren't in the right place, you gotta get on them. And if their eyes aren't in the right place, you gotta get on them. So again, I said it's all about the process. It's not about the result. Jeff's locking a guy down over there. He doesn't get the ball thrown to him. That doesn't mean he graded out well. That was his first step. Where were his eyes? Did he really win on the route? Was he in the right position? Did he get his eyes back? So you just stay on him and you coach him hard on the process. So hopefully when the time comes, they're ready to make the plays. Coach, thank you very Thanks. much.